Hey, Tim here. In today's video, I'm back with another challenge. Um, I actually got asked this a couple of weeks ago, and the question was this. Um, the user wanted to essentially find a way of showing a visualization that showed the number of patients in a hospital at any given day over a period of time. But their data set only had this setup. So they had a ID for the patient. They had a start date for the uh, date in which the patient started treatment. Uh, they had another column, which was the date which treatment ended. And then on the final column, they had um, some sort of uh, location identifier to tell you where the hospital was. In this case, I've just gone with state. And so with this particular setup, they had a couple of requirements. You couldn't do data prep, so I can't use something like Autrix or Tableau Prep to do this. And they wanted to be able to show the number of patients in any given day um, from basically the minimum date to the maximum date, essentially the range of the entire data set. And, and the range really involves the start date for um, uh, you know the, the first patient they saw to the end date of the last patient. So we don't really, really even know that because it's really hard to see that um, in this data set. So I could probably sort this, but I'm not going to do this here in Excel. We're going to do it in Tableau and try and figure it out. So I thought a bit about this and I actually realized hey, we can probably do some date scaffolding here with the relationships and data models. So I kind of had a go and actually it worked out. So that's why I'm making a video about it because I think it's another nice way you can do scaffolding without having to do really any data prep other than one small step, which I'm gonna show you in this video. Let's get stuck in. Okay, so what I want to do before I get stuck into this is I just wanna sort of uh, remind you what this data looks like. So you've got the ID, the start, the end and the state. What I really need to do is for, uh, if I just take this patient, patient number one here, and let me just zoom in to make it clearer. What I need to do is that for every day in between the, uh, I, I think this is a, a, an American date set. So the 1st of February, 2021, up until the 11th of July, 2021, I need that uh, patient represented on every uh, day, essentially in that record. And so, the way I thought of doing this is actually quite a simple way. What I wanted to do is create another Excel file. So what I what I did is I just go into ahead and, and did this. This is the only step I did that wasn't strictly in Tableau. And I just basically gave it an arbitrary date. So I just thought 0, 01, uh, 4 times 0, 01. And what I did just to avoid any conflicts whatsoever is I just chose a year that, that definitely wasn't in the data set. So I said 2017, okay? and uh, not 2117, so 2017, here we go. And um, essentially uh, Excel wouldn't recognize this as a date. So let's go ahead and just call this date, okay? And then uh, what you can do is if you just go ahead and start adding uh, elements to this, you'll see that you get a day um, increment. So it's automatically starting to work by the day. So what, I, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna keep going all the way down. I'll just drag this all the way down. You can see, I can see the date on the very right hand side. And I just held this until I got to uh, 2021. Actually, we won a few more dates. So this is going to be quite a big data set. So we'll say, we'll stop at uh, 30th of December, 2022. That's actually my birthday. So um, we've got the dates filled out all the way until 2022. Then I save this as a simple file. So let's go ahead and save this and we will call this I will put this in the dates folder, which is where I'm working. We'll call this um, date scaffold, okay? And by doing this, all we're doing is we're basically creating a day um, on every single day, right through to the 30th of December, 2022. Okay, and now that we've done this, we're pretty much done with uh, Excel and we've got our original data set still untouched. We're gonna close this and uh, we're gonna save it, make sure that it's got the right formatting. Um, I'll leave that as a, a CSV and we'll just leave that in there and we'll go to Tableau. So let's go ahead and open Tableau. I'll open the latest version of Tableau just so we've got this working correctly. Okay, Tableau is now open. I'm gonna connect to my data. Now, it's really important that you think about the data model in this case, because what I essentially want to do is I wanna define a relationship that looks at the start date and the end date and creates a relationship between those two things. So what I'm going to do is essentially, I'm gonna to connect to the CSV file, which in this case is a text file. So let's go ahead and connect to the CSV file. You'll see that the date example comes up here. And there we go, we've got the dates. Uh, because I'm using the latest version of Tableau, this uh, interface is slightly more modern and, and new. And I can actually go into a particular sheet and I can just look at the dates and see where they start and end. So you can see the date start in 2020 and the end in 2022. I can of course choose more detailed date parts here. So 
I get data all the way up until May 2022, which is good for the end date and for the start date. Let's go ahead and expand this. I'll remove these out the way and we can expand this one more time. I get data from October till October 2020 uh, to 2021. So that's all fine. Now for the actual scaffold, we need to think about this more carefully. So let's go back, go into our data model. And when I'm doing this, what I actually want to do is make this my secondary data set. Now, in all honesty, it doesn't actually matter which way around you define this. I could make this my primary data set, but I always find it easier to write logic when you have what's considered your primary data set in the right place. And so because I'm trying to visualize the number of patients on each day across the entire data set, what I actually need to do is start with my scaffolding data set. So I'll go ahead and add that as another connection. So this was, I believe, an Excel file. There you go, date scaffold. And you can see that essentially I'm using the uh, connection capabilities to connect to a second file. So the first file is my text file. This could be your database. And this second file is an Excel file, which is where I actually created the file. And you can see it's just got the dates all the way down. So uh, unfortunately, I didn't rename this. So what we can do is click on this drop down and we can just say date um, scaffold. OK. And now we want to go and get the main date and we want to bring it in. So this is our date example data set. We're going to bring it in. And this is where we kind of have to start getting creative because this relationship needs to do a couple of things for us. For every day that a patient is technically in the hospital, we need to create a relationship with the date scaffold. And what we essentially need to do is we need to take a date in the date scaffold and see if that date falls between the start and the end date. And so the relationship basically needs to create a relationship with all data items where two conditions are met. Number one, the start date is uh, greater than or equal to uh, the date scaffold. And then secondly, the end date is uh, less than or equal to the end date uh, or the date scaffold, essentially, sorry. So those are the two conditions we need to write. So I, I, I'm confusing people 100%. So let's go ahead and write this. So first one, we're going to choose a date and we're going to say uh, greater than or equal to the start date. OK, so that is going to give us one set of relationship items, but it's only capturing the start. What we now need to do is to capture the end. So let's go ahead, add another field. We're going to get the same date again. And what we're going to say is less than or equal to the end date. OK, so for each record, essentially Tableau is checking this relationship logic. And if it finds the data, it's actually going to blend these two dates together. But it does it at query time. It doesn't do it through a join. So we don't get this massive exploded data set. We just have two data sets still. You can see our data set here on the left. And if I click on the date scaffold, you can see the other one um, also working completely fine. So my relationship has been defined and we're pretty much ready to go. So that's all I need to do now. I need to just go to sheet one and we can start to test this out a little bit. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is just bring in the dates. OK, and when I bring in the dates, you see that we get this. Now, what I want to do is actually set this down to the month and I'm going to uh, put this on the columns just so we get this sort of nice chart. And just so we're absolutely clear, if I bring the count of the date scaffold, you can see we have a pretty consistent number of days in every month. So that shows you that this date scaffold is really working every few Februarys. You can see here we have 28, 28, and then we have 29 and so on and so forth. So those are your leap years. Everything is working pretty good. So let's remove this uh, count of dates and let's go back to what we wanted to do. Now for the next one, what we need to do is count how many uh, patients are in on each of these days. So I can actually just bring the ID. I'm going to drop it here and you'll notice that as soon as I did that, the date range here suddenly shrunk. And that's because our relationship has kicked in. It's now only bringing in data where both things are met. I could ask it to show me the nulls on either side, but it's not doing that. It's just showing me the range. And because these IDs aren't really that descriptive, the detail doesn't seem to work here. What I really need to do is to count the number of patients. So what I need to do is do a distinct count of a particular ID on each day. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can see that it's done the count. OK, uh, it is actually there. You can see that it's uh, all coming up as zero. But let's put this in on rows. 
and let's see what happens. Okay, so now you can see it's starting to work. Uh, you can see that it's zero, 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 and then we have a number and it climbs up and it goes down again. Okay, so this is starting to work. And because we've used a month as a primary data set, it only is going to kick in here when we actually have data for the first one. So remember, we said the data started in October 2020 and our last patient uh, left the system on May of 2022, which we validated at the beginning of this. So now what I can do, let me just do something really simple, which I'll just I'll just exclude all these. Uh, I'm going to do it in a very crude way just to get rid of all this stuff because we don't need all of this in our view. It's going to just make it more complex. And so you can see here that we've basically answered the question. We have uh, three, at the highest number, we have 355 patients in our uh, system. And what I can now start to do is just visualize this. So I can just break this down by state as in a simple example. And I can immediately see which states have the highest number of patients at any given time. So you can use this technique to solve the problem where you're trying to visualize things like support desk data, or you're trying to visualize how many people were in a particular system at any one time. I haven't done any complex scaffolding whatsoever outside of uh, the Excel file that I created to give us a range of dates. And even that was very basic. I basically chose a start date. I chose an end date that was ridiculous. And then we put that into our data set to work with. Now, if you were trying to be a little bit more consistent, what you might do to that data set is expand it a lot more. But just keeping things simple, that's all you really need to do. So here we've got everything set up. We've answered the question and you're pretty much good to go. And it works just as fast, just as simple as if you'd done this in data prep and it was all clean to good to go. Now, what you could then do is you could then build a visualization to say, well, look, which patients were in the hospital on this particular day? You could build another dashboard and click on that and it would send you to see all the patients in the system on, any, on, on that day in this particular hospital and you'd be able to sort of get that to work in a really, really easy way. But that's not what this video is about. I just wanted to show you this very simple scaffolding method that doesn't use any data prep apart from that one Excel file and it allows us to use the relationship and the data model to create something super interesting. If you've enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.